Welcome everybody. Today we will be ranking the top five class one bike paths across San Bernardino County for 2020. San Bernardino County is simply enormous. It's the single largest county anywhere within the United States. It stretches just over 20,000 square miles from the San Bernardino National Forest, Joshua Tree National Park, up along the California-Nevada state border to the Mojave State Desert and back. Given its size and remote location, San Bernardino County has unique qualities distinguishing it from the neighboring areas of Southern California. Instead of beaches, you will find hot, rocky, desert communities, large, sprawling cities, and small towns with mountainous, forested regions hundreds of miles from one another. The great thing is, although the county is remote and biking options are limited, there remains some great bike paths, which we will break down in this video. For each path, I'll be looking at location, overall length, elevation gains, accessibility, amenities, and safety to determine their overall rankings. All right, let's jump into it. Here's what I believe are San Bernardino's top five class one bike paths for 2020. The Apple Valley Road bike path, you guessed it, runs approximately two miles directly alongside Apple Valley Road into the town's main shopping district. The town of Apple Valley itself is a medium-sized, remote, dry suburban community of approximately 73,000 people right in the middle of San Bernardino County in a two hours drive away from the closest beach. You will begin this ride from the north outside of a Chevron gas station. Traveling south along this narrow bikeway against the traffic, you won't find any bike facilities along the route, but you will weave between some green flower beds that feature local drought tolerant trees and plants. A welcome, simple feature within this dry brown landscape providing some shade below the trees. Beyond that, you'll be greeted with nothing but exposed open space to your left and suburban developments to your right. Once you reach the far south end of this path, you can turn left to find the Apple Valley Town Center alongside Bear Valley Road. Full of restaurants and shopping options, this is a nice place to relax at before extending your ride. After your return trip to the north, you can seamlessly further your ride into the town of Apple Valley or Victorville and beyond using an older network of class one bike paths alongside Yucca Loma Road. However, these extended bike paths are severely underdeveloped, cracked and worn by the intense desert heat of the region. You may just want to make use of the city's class two lanes instead for a more comfortable ride. My view is that this individual path, given its remoteness, is not a huge draw for anyone living outside of Apple Valley or Victorville. With its very simple design and limited facilities, this path has been developed for locals interested in commuting by bike to shop or to get to work in a safer manner and not much else. For those reasons, that's why the Apple Valley Road bike path has found its place at number five on this list. Traveling out of the desert and into the nearby San Bernardino National Forest, we will find the city of Big Bear Lake in the Alpine Pedal Path. Situated on the north side of Big Bear Lake, this path is the only class one bike path in Big Bear and throughout the San Bernardino National Forest. Stretching 2.5 miles, it's a perfect facility for families and beginner riders due to its minimal inclines and short distance. Beyond that, the path itself provides all riders stunning views of Big Bear Lake while weaving between the beautiful pine trees of the San Bernardino National Forest and back. Keep your eyes peeled for animals and the nature that surrounds you as I'm sure you're here to get away from the typical urban hustle of Southern California. This path has a few must-see locations to check out, such as the Big Bear Discovery Center, the Solar Observatory, and Juniper Point. Don't worry about bringing your bike up here either, because there are plenty of bike rental facilities in town on the north and south side of the lake. If you're looking to casually stroll across miles of forested areas and lakeside terrain, then the Big Bear Alpine Pedal Path is a great free facility for you and any visitor in town. So be sure to check it out. Leaving the mountains and heading back to the desert, you will find the community of Victorville in the Mojave Riverwalk Bike Path. This path just opened in November of 2019 and at a lengthy 3.9 miles, it's an absolute standout within the region and hopefully a sign of things to come. Presently, you won't even find this route on Google Maps, but here it is. From the south, you can park in the large public parking lot outside of Victor Valley College. Alternatively, you can park for free on the north end 
in a small parking lot outside the gates of the Mojave Narrows Regional Park. You can pay $8 to enter the park itself. Starting from the north, you will travel east along Yates Road and head towards the Ucaloma Bridge. About halfway to the bridge, you will be greeted with an option to veer left to extend your ride to its full length by taking this looped extension into a small part of the Mojave Narrows Regional Park, sending you around the beautiful Pelican Lake and surrounding Family Park. This extension is definitely worth your effort to view one of the only local public lakes in the region, a very welcome sight in the desert. As you leave the lake, you will seamlessly loop back to where you entered and continue on your journey east. If you choose to skip this loop entirely, just continue straight and your one-way ride will reduce down to 3.3 miles. From here, you will travel to the Ucaloma Bridge and south under it to merge with the Mojave River. Riding alongside the river's edge, this part of the path becomes very exposed to the desert elements. You'll likely experience some very strong headwinds mixed with sandy, hot desert air, while also being very exposed to the sun towards the end of the ride. Be prepared for that. Ride early to beat the winds and the heat. On the plus side, this section of the path is very flat, easy to navigate, and rides alongside a safe, suburban area of Victorville. As a bonus, you will likely see plenty of birds and animals within the riverbed, especially on the north end, amongst the trees. Eventually, you will reach Bear Valley Road at the end of the path outside of Victor Valley College. Here, there's a nice sheltered area for you to relax at before the return trip to your car. Park here if you prefer to start your ride from the south end. All in all, this path is a beautiful addition to a region that has recently worked really hard to promote safe, eco-friendly commuting options for its residents, with beautiful views of the local mountains and wildlife. It really provides an oasis within the desert for cyclists willing to brave the desert elements. If you can, check it out yourself. One of my absolute favorites, the Santa Ana River Bikeway, stretches between three Southern California counties. And this section accounts for the northernmost end of the bikeway's potential 100 mile route, from the ocean to the mountains and back. This section begins where the county meets with Riverside and travels seven miles through the heart of San Bernardino to the bikeway's northernmost point, terminating just a few miles away from the entry to the San Bernardino National Forest. This section is also the shortest when compared to Riverside, 13 miles, and Orange County, 30 miles. Positioned in the heart of San Bernardino's commerce and commercial center, it's a great resource for local commuters in the area to get from one side of the city to another, while seamlessly connecting you to the southern communities, open spaces, and parks of Riverside County. On its own, the San Bernardino section from the start, weaves you around the expanse of green areas of the La Loma Hills and alongside the south side of the city's downtown center. However, unlike the Riverside portion, this section is better defined by a return to riding directly alongside the concrete riverbed over many bridges, under many roads, and through the industrial areas of San Bernardino. The benefit of riding along this route is that if simply commuting, you'll have access to San Bernardino's major commercial center. However, if you're here just for leisure or exercise, you might appreciate the green spaces within the riverbed more. Overall, its accessibility to the city of San Bernardino itself, the seamless, safe connections it makes to Riverside County to the south, and the future plans to extend the path all the way north to Big Bear Lake makes this portion of the Santa Ana River bikeway climb to the number two spot. Okay, quick note. Before we reach number one, if you've enjoyed this video so far, be sure to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to see all future releases like this one. You know the drill. It helps me out a lot and lets me know that you're enjoying the videos. Okay, let's get to number one. The Pacific Electric Bikeway is a standout within San Bernardino and reaches the number one spot for a lot of notable reasons. This extensive 21 mile long bike path stretches from where the LA County border meets San Bernardino in Upland, California. As you ride this route, you will pass by some interesting county landmarks, plenty of open spaces, downtown city centers, and the towering local mountains. Starting on the direct east end of this path, you will find a small public parking lot that acts as a great starting point for your journey. If the lot is full, or if you prefer a more secure area to park, the nearby Montclair Metrolink station is another great option just around the corner. As you begin your ride along this path, 
you will be traveling along a historic route that accounts for the development and expansion of the modern day San Bernardino as we know it. The path follows the now defunct Pacific Electric Railway, but still retains the same name. The PER, for short, was a railway system famous for its red cars, which carried goods such as citrus and wine from the bountiful inland San Bernardino communities to Los Angeles and throughout the rest of the United States. Vehicles on the highway can supply much more and go further than the railway, so the railway was shut down and decommissioned, eventually being converted into this public bike path years later. This path intersects with Route 66 at the five mile mark with plenty of symbolic displays, most notable is a public art display along the crossing bike bridge, seen from both directions of travel. After crossing the bike bridge, if you stop and walk down to the lower parking lot, you will find a fully restored display of the original Pacific Electric Railway tracks and other elements that feature the railway's importance to the region. Also, this is a great public parking spot if you want to cut about 10 miles off your round trip journey. Speaking of railways, there are major Metrolink tracks that skirt along the bike path. With Montclair Station to the east and Rialto Station to the west side, you can jump on a train to easily return to your car with your bike if you only plan to complete a one-way trip from end to end. As you continue east along the path, past the Route 66 bridge, you will pass through Greenbelts, vast open spaces, four separate San Bernardino cities and downtown areas, all while being dwarfed by the towering local Mount San Antonio to the north. On a clear day, the mountain provides a breathtaking backdrop as you traverse the full 21 mile long bike path. For the final stretch, you will find yourself riding through parks and you will end up on South Cactus Avenue in the city of Rialto, outside of a small bike bridge, which acts as another throwback replica to the original design of the Pacific Electric Railway, something that is a common theme along the entire route. Unfortunately, the downfall of this path is that you will be greeted by either a stop sign, crosswalk, or rerouted areas that halt your movement at an approximate rate of every mile. There are just not enough bridges or tunnels built into this path currently that allow riders to keep pace. It can be very frustrating at times. This is the path's biggest downfall in my opinion. However, if that doesn't bother you, then the positives greatly outweigh the negatives. This route is ultimately a completely safe, accessible, and convenient resource for commuters, people exercising, and families across this region. And that's why it comes in as the clear number one bike path for San Bernardino County as of 2020. Well, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the top five list. If you did, please sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody, and as always, ride on and ride safe.